you besties. Today we're going to be talking about metabolic acidosis, aka when your body turns up that acid party gone wild and not the fun margarita on the beach kind of wild. We're talking about a pH disaster and guess what? You're the bouncer who needs to kick out all that extra acid. Let's get started. So how do we end up with this acidic mess? There are four major ways that this metabolic mess happens, and I like to think of them as the four horsemen of the acidopocalypse. Number one, you have the acid making factory going into overtime. This means we're gonna see an increase in acid production. We're gonna start with lactic acidosis. So here's the deal. Your cells run on oxygen to make energy known as ATP. But when oxygen levels plummet, whether due to shock, cardiac arrest, sepsis, or an intense exercise, your cells are gonna to begin to panic and switch into anaerobic metabolism. That means that we're making energy without oxygen. Think of it this way. Aerobic metabolism is like using a gas-powered car. It runs efficiently so long as we have fuel known as oxygen. But when that oxygen runs out, your body switches into anaerobic metabolism, which is like running your car on fumes. So what's the problem? Well, with anaerobic metabolism, it's gonna to start to churn out lactic acid, which is a byproduct. This means that it's gonna accumulate in the blood and it's gonna drop the pH into acidic territory. Then we have diabetic ketoacidosis, also known as DKA. In normal conditions, your blood runs on glucose for energy. But in DKA, your cells can't access glucose because insulin is either missing, like we see in type one diabetes, or it's ineffective. So your body's gonna start to think that it's starving. Even though glucose is floating around in your blood, it can't get it into the cells. So what does your body do in this situation? It's gonna switch into burning fat for fuel, thinking, hey, we need this to survive. But here's the problem. When we start burning fat, we're gonna start producing ketones. It's an acidic byproduct that builds up in the bloodstream, ultimately lowering the pH and causing a metabolic acidosis mess. For number two, we have too much acid consumption. You can think of it like chugging menthol, salicylates, also known as aspirin overdoses, or antifreeze known as ethylene glycol is a no-go in this situation. So here's the deal with this one. Don't drink weird things, y'all. End of story. For number three, the kidneys go on strike and we see a decrease in acid elimination. If your kidneys quit their job, also known as renal failure, acid is gonna build up faster than your student loan debt. No kidney filtration means acid overload. And lastly, for number four, we have increased elimination of our base. Bicarbonate loss equals diarrhea disaster. If we have too much diarrhea, bye-bye bicarbonate. Hello, acid. Think of bicarbonate as your body's tongues. If you lose too much, your pH is gonna drop. So what about those metabolic acidosis causes? Well, I present to you the greatest memory trick, mud piles. M stands for menthol. Don't drink random chemicals, y'all. Just don't do it. The U stands for uremia, that's renal failure at its finest. The D stands for diabetic ketoacidosis, also known as DKA. Hello, high blood sugar meltdown. Our P stands for propylene glycol. That's the stuff that's found in antifreeze, yikes. And I stands for iron tablets and isoniazid overdoses. Iron's not just for building muscles, apparently. And L, of course, stands for lactic acidosis, our anaerobic metabolism's drama queen of the moment. E stands for ethylene glycol. Again, antifreeze is for cars, not cocktails, y'all. And then our S stands for salicylates, our aspirin overdoses, where you pop one too many and then you're gonna be in trouble. So let's talk about what happens when the body realizes, oh crap, we're in way too much acid here. So your pH starts dropping like a roller coaster heading straight into the danger zone and your body doesn't like being acidic. So what it does is it hits the emergency response system known as compensation. Unlike with our respiratory problems, now we're dealing with a metabolic problem, meaning that there's a kidney bicarbonate issue. So the lungs are gonna be the key players in stepping up in this situation. So first up, the chemo receptors in our brainstem, also known as our medulla oblongata, shout out to our AMP classes, are gonna constantly be monitoring our blood for pH changes. 
When they detect an invasion of hydrogen ions, aka our acidic bullies, they're going to send a 911 response to our respiratory system. The lungs are then going to be told, get rid of this CO2 stat. To fix this problem, the lungs are going to speed up breathing, also known as hyperventilation, to excel some of that excess CO2. This means that by having more CO2 leaving the body, we're going to have less acid in our bloodstream. It's like opening up the windows to air out a room full of toxic fumes. There's also another Another specific kind of respiration called Kuzmal's respirations, which are big, deep, desperate breaths. If metabolic acidosis is severe enough, like we see with diabetic ketoacidosis, DKA, the body goes into full Kuzmal's mode. Deep, fast, labored breaths. Why? Because just breathing faster is not going to be enough in this situation. The body needs to take deep breaths to really blow off that excess CO2. You can think of it like a marathon runner panting after they just sprinted uphill. Except in this case, that person is just laying in a hospital bed. But here's the catch. Yes, there's always a catch. Compensation does not fix the underlying problem. Your lungs are only going to be able to do so much. This is really just a temporary fix. If you don't address the root cause, whether it's DKA, lactic acidosis, or renal failure, the acidosis is just going to continue to worsen. So let's talk about how metabolic acidosis throws the entire body into chaos. First up, we have our respiratory system. Your lungs immediately are going to try to fix this mess because as we know, breathing is the fastest way to alter our pH. Like we talked about before, hyperventilation is going to kick in because it's the body's desperate way of trying to blow off all that excess CO2. However, if we don't fix the underlying problem, all this hyperventilation can eventually give out, leading to respiratory failure. Next up, we have our cardiovascular system. Metabolic acidosis is a blood vessel and heart nightmare. Your heart is desperately trying to push blood through an acidic environment, but guess what? Acidosis makes blood vessels dilate, also known as vasodilation. This is going to drop our blood pressure faster than a phone falling to the concrete. This is ultimately going to lead to hypotension because our blood vessels become too relaxed and now our brain and our vital organs aren't getting the oxygen that they need. We can also see things like dysrhythmias, which are irregular heartbeats, because that acidic blood can ultimately mess up with the heart's electrical system. In severe cases, and I mean real severe cases, this can ultimately lead to cardiac arrest. Acidosis messes with potassium levels, and trust me, you do not want your heart arguing with potassium. And then we have our neurological system. Your brain hates to be in acidic blood. It's like being stuck in a toxic work environment. Nothing's working properly and everybody just wants to quit. You start to see confusion dizziness, and disorientation. The brain isn't getting enough oxygen it needs because of that low blood pressure. This can ultimately lead to lethargy, stupor, or even coma in worst case scenarios. If that pH just continues to drop, the brain is ultimately going to start shutting down. And lastly, we have seizures. Yes, seizures, because with severe acidosis, this can cause seizures too. The neurons are just ultimately becoming fried. So what about our renal system? The kidneys are usually the MVP when it comes to pH regulation, but in metabolic acidosis, they're either failing to do their jobs or they're drowning in hydrogen ions. The kidneys normally pee out hydrogen ions known as our acid and reabsorb bicarbonate known as our base. But if they're damaged or they're overwhelmed, acid's going to build up and it's going to build up really fast. And then we have that good old musculoskeletal system. Metabolic acidosis equals acid in our bloodstream equals our muscles are going to start taking a hit. Muscle weakness and fatigue can occur because the cells aren't getting enough oxygen or energy. If we start to see breakdown of our muscle tissues in severe cases of acidosis, it can lead to rhabdomyolysis, where the muscles literally just start to dissolve themselves. And of course, if we start to see potassium shifts, we're going to see things like cramping, spasms, and even potential paralysis if it's severe enough. So as nurses, how are we going to take care of these patients? Of course, we're going to use our handy dandy mnemonic known as ACID. A stands for assess and identify the cause. Before we can fix the problem, we need to figure out what the problem is. We're going to do this by checking our ABGs, that's our arterial blood gases, to see if our pH is less than 7.35 or if our HCO3 is also low. 
This means that we're looking at metabolic acidosis. We also want to make sure that we're viewing our labs. We're going to be looking at glucose in situations of DKA. We're going to be looking at our lactate if we're suspecting lactic acidosis. If we think renal failure is the problem, we're going to be looking at our BUN and our creatinine. And then, of course, we're always going to run a toxicology in case there's any kind of poisoning taking place. Once we identify the cause, we're going to do C. We're going to correct the underlying issue. If we suspect that the individual has DKA, we might look into giving insulin as well as IV fluids to help stop ketone production. When it comes to lactic acidosis, we want to fix the oxygen problem. So fluids, oxygen, and blood if needed. If renal failure is severe enough, hello dialysis. If we suspect that there's some kind of toxin on board, then we can look at giving antidotes for those toxins or in severe cases, dialysis may be necessary in order to remove them. And then lastly, if your patient's got severe diarrhea, then we're most likely going to start replenishing some fluids and electrolytes. Our I stands for intervene with meds and fluids. We can look at giving IV fluids to help dilute the acid buildup and restore perfusion. We can even probably give sodium bicarbonate, although it's very rare and only given in severe cases. Because bicarb isn't always going to be the frontline treatment. We only use it if the pH is less than 7.1 or if we have an extreme bicarbonate carb loss like we see with severe diarrhea. Electrolyte correction is also going to be huge. Potassium can go wild when we have acidosis. So we might see high potassium levels, also known as hyperkalemia. In this case, we may give insulin and glucose to push that potassium back into our cells. If we have low potassium, also known as hypokalemia, from any kind of bicarb therapy, then we're definitely going to want to make sure that we're replacing it and replacing it ASAP. Because the lower our potassium goes, the increased likelihood we may see cardiac arrest. Oxygen therapy can also be crucial, especially in cases of hypoxia due to lactic acidosis. We want to make sure that we're getting that oxygen level flowing. And then lastly, our D stands for dialysis and monitor. Sometimes no amount of fluids or medications are going to fix the acidosis. And that's when we have to call in the big guns, dialysis. Like we said before, if the kidneys are tapped out due to renal failure, dialysis is going to be a key way to help us remove that acid buildup. And then, of course, if the patient has overdosed on some kind of toxin, then dialysis may be needed in order to get that toxin out. And of course, through this entire dialysis and monitoring process, we always want to be checking our ABGs, our vital signs, and our electrolytes. All right, besties, metabolic acidosis is not the kind of situation where you want to grab a cup of coffee and hope for the best. It is a full-blown medical emergency that can tank your patient fast if you don't act quickly. If you found that this video helped you, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, make sure that you leave them down below. We love answering your questions. Head over to nursechungstore.com where you can snatch this PowerPoint as well as any other goodies that you can find in the store. And as always, you can now go forth, fix some pH levels like the rock stars that you are. Bye!